in 2.35, uh, we are given a particle of mass m and kinetic energy e greater than zero modeled as a cart, as we will see in part b, the reason why we do this. And we're approaching an abrupt potential drop of v-naught. So this is just an inversion of uh, sort of the step potential we encountered in 2.34. Uh, in part A, we're asked what is the probability that it'll reflect back if E is equal to V naught over three. So uh, in this case, this is just a standard reflection problem. Uh, we know what the solutions look like. Uh, so let's write that out right now. So to the left, where V is equal to zero, the Schrodinger equation reads D two psi by DX squared is equal to two M over H bar squared times negative E times psi, or aka negative k squared psi, where k is equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. Uh, and this is when x is less than zero. Uh, on the right side, we have d2 psi by dx squared is equal to 2m over h bar squared times negative v naught minus e times psi. Uh, and this is going to equal, uh, let's see, so v naught is negative, right? Uh, we have negative v naught, and then e is positive. E is greater than v naught, but this is subtracted by a positive. So uh, this is going to be still negative. So this is going to be negative l squared psi, where l is going to equal the square root of 2m times, uh, let's see, v naught plus e divided by h bar when x is greater than 0. Uh, immediately, we know that E is equal to V naught over 3. So immediately, we can do some redefining. We can say K is actually equal to the square root of 2M times V naught divided by 3 over H bar. Uh, and L is equal to the square root of 2M times V naught plus V naught third divided by H bar or this is equal to the square root of 2m times 4 thirds v naught, all divided by h bar. Uh, let's see. Yes, so at this point, uh, we can rewrite these as k and l's, and our wave function is going to look like psi of x is equal to piecewise a e to the i k x plus b e to the negative i k x and then on the bottom side once again considering that we have an incident particle on the left side we omit the g term and we have just f e to the i l x when x is negative and when x is positive so uh, if we want to write this out fully uh, with our boundary conditions and everything then our boundary conditions are going to be uh, starting with continuity uh, a plus b equals f for the continuity of uh, the wave function, and then we have the continuity of the derivative, which is going to be i k times uh, a minus b is going to equal uh, i l f and then uh, just itself. So uh, immediately, uh, if we want the reflection coefficient, we want to solve f in terms of a and b. So we just plug this into here and we get uh, k times a minus b is equal to L times A plus B. And let's look at K and L for a second. So K is equal to one over H bar times the square root of two M V naught thirds. L is equal to one over H bar times the square root of two M times four V naught thirds, or otherwise known as two over H bar square root 2m v naught thirds. So what we see is that L is just equal to 2k. Uh, so in that case, we can rewrite this as k times a minus b is equal to 2k times a plus b. Then we can just cancel out the k's and we get a minus b is equal to 2a plus 2b. Uh, and then we move these around, uh, then we get negative a is equal to 3b. So if we want the reflection coefficient, then that's equal to the magnitude squared of b over a squared. So b over a is going to equal negative one third. Uh, if I move that over, yeah, 
And then so the perfection coefficient is just equal to 1 over 9. Uh, and just like that, we have solved part A. Uh, part B is a bit of a conceptual question. So uh, we were drawing the figure in part A as if we were thinking of the particle as if it was a cart approaching a cliff. Now, realistically, if you approached a cliff uh, and just ran, attempted to run uh, over it, uh, the probability of you bouncing back would obviously not be as large as one ninth. Uh, realistically, it, it would be like an in infinitesimally tiny chance. Uh, and we want to explain why this potential does not correctly represent a cliff. So uh, the reason why this doesn't work for classical is that in order for a classical object with mass to have its potential energy change instantaneously, it would have to accelerate at a rate of infinity, which obviously is impossible. Because remember, this is not a height map, it's a potential map. So if you think about in classical mechanics, the potential uh, that we deal with when we're dealing with height is gravitational potential energy, m g h so uh for something like a cliff right if an object goes over the cliff if i have an actual physical cliff something like this and i'm standing on this cliff and i decide to jump off what's going to happen to my potential energy it doesn't instantaneously decrease to zero because okay this is the physical map and yes the cliff physically goes instantaneously from x equals some height h to x equals zero at the ground but my potential is going to decrease uh, continuously instead of instantaneously because what's going to happen is that I'm going to jump off this cliff and I'm going to gradually start accelerating downwards uh, so what's going to happen is my my potential energy is going to sort of be uh, exponentially is going to exponentially decrease or not exponentially but parabolically decrease according to mg uh, according to like the gravitational uh, force uh, so if you did like a kinematics equation and all that and you found the force and you set that equal to mass times acceleration you'll find that you know the acceleration in this case uh is actually linear uh so the gravitational potential energy will decrease but it won't go down instantaneously like this uh so sort of in order for your potential to instantaneously go down to zero in the case of uh gravitational potential energy the only way for that to happen is we would have to instantaneously go from the top of the cliff down to the bottom of the cliff and that would sort of imply that we had an infinite acceleration which obviously is not realistic so therefore uh a potential cliff quote unquote does not correctly represent any sort of uh a, a sort of a physical cliff uh so to say uh part c is de uh, is sort of deceptively complicated uh or deceptively simple i, I suppose uh where it, it seems very difficult to do but actually it's very trivial almost uh when a free neutron enters a nucleus it experiences a sudden drop in potential energy from v equals zero to around negative 12 mega electron volts uh so suppose we have a neutron that has a kinetic energy of four mega electron volts so this is its energy value and it's encountering this sort of potential dip that looks the exact same as this only you know v naught is going to be negative 12 mega electron volts and then the initial energy is going to be you know uh four mega electron volts so uh we're asked what is the probability that it will be absorbed therefore initiating another fission so basically what's the probability of it being able to make it through the well uh and basically we want to find the transmission coefficient so uh the the reason why i say this is deceptively simple is uh, that we're not, like, if you realize, you know, for this potential, when we calculated R, it's just equal to 1, 9. It has no variables like mass or, or potential or anything like that. None of that shows up. So what that means is that, you know, it doesn't really matter what the numbers actually are because uh, our, our reflection coefficient formula doesn't include any variables in the first place. It's just a constant for any sort of potential that drops discontinuously. So if this really is a potential that drops discontinuously, the transmission coefficient is literally just 8 over 9 because R plus C has to equal 1. There's no variables or anything, so th there's nothing we have to calculate. T is just equal to 8 over 9, and we're just done. So all of these, you know... The, the sort of information that we're given, V equals zero outside and negative 12 mega electron volts inside, and the energy is equal to like four mega electron volts, none of that actually matters uh, because of the fact that just like the reflection coefficient just doesn't have variables in the first place for us to calculate. 